So, this video is going to be dedicated to all of you Trove NPCs out there who have been flooding my comment section over the past few months to the past few years, asking me about what mods I use in Trove. Yes, this is finally the updated 2023 video in which I will show you guys all of the mods I use and some of the mods that I would recommend to those of you who are still actively grinding in the game. So with all of that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's just jump right into the mods that I use. But first things first, I want you guys to note that a couple of mods that I have right here are outdated. As you can see in the top left hand corner of my screen, there is going to be this little um, 800 Total Mastery sigil in which is not going to be matching the one that I currently have which is the 850 sigil because this mod is essentially outdated. Without further ado, let's first talk about the first set of mods that we have right here in which is going to be the Obscure UI set. Now do note that a lot of the Obscure UI mods are going to be outdated, especially I believe um, the store ones in which I've replaced with some other UIs. So for the most part, the ones like the inventory or the collections, these ones still do work. And the ones that I have right here, as you can see, um, the activity tracker, barber shop, blah, blah, blah. All of these ones are going to be mods that are not outdated as of this video. The one I really want to highlight is this obscure UI better invites one, which is basically going to allow you to straight away post items in the marketplace. As you can see, um, if I want to list or relist my unyielding emblem. I can just click on this and it's going to just relist it for you. You don't have to click the um, confirm button, which might be a little bit dangerous for those of you who accidentally uh, input the wrong values. Additionally, um, having this mod will allow you to auto teleport to the boss rooms in the delves without needing to click on the accept button, which is going to be pretty cool. You can stay AFK and just let your friends clear the delve, but don't tell them I said that. So for the other stuff that I would like to point out that the Obscure UI offers is like this small map. As you can see, when you're farming basically and you're shooting like pew pew and then you're just hitting mobs and you want to basically find the next dungeon, this small map will allow you to have basically a better view of where you're going compared to the usual map which will take up like three quarters of this screen usually which is going to be a pain when you're trying to find out where you want to go, right? Um, I guess enough about the obscure UIs. There's not really too much that I want to talk about this. The next one we have right here is the anime loading screens by V1. If you've been wondering like what are the loading screens I have had over the past like few years, then just take a look. As you can see, um, instead of the trove usual shitty um, backgrounds, they're just going to be showing a bunch of randomized um, anime backgrounds. Um, I think there's like 30 or 40 different pictures that it will be RNG from. So yeah, it's going to be a really, really good change of pace from the usual garbage trove backgrounds which features the hub and whatnot. Okay, so the next mod that we have right here is the auto claims mod in which basically once you open your claims, you will be able to claim everything. So let's say you're trying to farm like Uber 10 ships and then you have like 500,000 claims of like robotic salvage from your tomes or your star bar. So basically once you open your claims, it's going to claim everything and it's going to go into your inventory. So besides all of that, uh, another really, really important mod that I want to stress heavily on even though it is currently outdated right now, is the Auto Easy Happy UI mod. A lot of you guys have been asking me what mod I've been using because of this level up feature that we can find right here. Let me just um, open up one box. So basically, when you have this um, Auto Easy Happy UI mod, when you click the Auto Up function, it's basically going to upgrade your gem to any selected level that you want. I picked level 15, but I don't have enough gem dust because I have not been farming this game ages so yeah so the next mod that we have right here is the IU hotbar and it's basically just going to be a cleaner version that I prefer over the other hotbars because it doesn't have like the the weird outline thingy that is opaque and whatnot and not to mention if you head on into the geode caves it's gonna give you a numerical value of your gas left so you can pretty much just gauge right like how much gas you have and you can just communicate it to your friends which is going to be a really, really good thing. Also, this is going to show you the percentage of your energy 
in which if we use an alt, as you can see, it does drop and increase back again. So moving on to the next mod, we have the bold UI. And why I like this UI is basically because once you enter into your um, class section, you can just click on the class to, to just change to it. So it's going to be really, really quick rather than having to click on the um, small button at the bottom, I believe, if you're using no mod. Other than that, as you can see, we have got the clean atlas in which um, is going to allow you to have this, um, I guess, transparent atlas in which you can still see the background even though you've opened up your atlas. With that being said, let's take a look at the next few mods that we have right here, which is going to be the Clock Plus mod. This is not going to be any new mod, it's just going to be the usual old Clock Plus mod, which will show you the dungeons per hour that you've completed, as well as how much time you have spent in the world and your current time in your current time zone. And it used to have um, the flux per hour thing, but I guess I was, I've just been too lazy to include that. So yeah, you, you can have the flux per hour thing. I have a video talking about it. I probably link it in the description below. Honestly, I don't really want to talk too much about it. Other than that, as you can see, we have got the crazy only cube boss radar. And this is going to be blocking this master radar VFX, which was an old mod that I once used. So the difference between these mods is, as you can see, there is going to be a square that will encapsulate the bosses. And once you kill them, they're going to be gone. Um, yep, there we go. Okay, and then when there's the box, this little chest VFX comes along and basically allows you to find where the chest is, which is going to be a neat addition that this Master Radar VFX does not have. But do note, that the cursed skulls and whatnot will not have these um, square boxes that are going to show you where they are. And I honestly would recommend either one depending on what you really want. If you want to farm more world bosses or if you want to farm more um, actual dungeons, depending on which one you want, then you can choose whether you want the Master Radar VFX or the other one that we can find, which is the Cube Boss Radar VFX. Other than that, we have got the Arcane and the Martial Emblem Flask thing. As you saw earlier when I was using my flask right there, as you can see, when we have this little icon, it means that we have got the Arcane Emblem on. It's also going to work the same for the Martial Emblem, which is going to be the physical damage version of this emblem. And there's not really too much to talk about, so let's move on to the next one, which is going to be the Shadow Radiant Stellar VFX thing. I've covered this in the previous video as well. Other than that, we have this Daughter's Gauntlet cursor. Again, it's just going to be this cursor on your screen right now, which is going to look much better than the usual blue arrow that you have with no mod. So yeah, other than that, we have got the Easy Flux mod, in which is going to highlight the mobs that have a 100% chance of dropping gears to you. So as you can see, this mob is going to drop a gear whenever we kill them. This one as well, as you can see, they are all going to drop stuff. So besides all of that, we have got the Geode Cave mods, in which we have got the Egg Finder one right here, which glows whenever you have like a bronze, silver, or gold companion eggs in the Geode Caves. Nothing too much to talk about. Other than this, we have got the Ganyu mod. Yes, a lot of people have been asking me about my costume. Is it a mod? Is it a thing in the game? This is a mod in the game, okay? It's not going to be an actual costume. It's going to be using the Shadow Tower costume, as you can see right here. The one that costs like a few Dispel Divinity. So it's going to be pretty easy for you guys to get if you want to get these skins on your characters. The other one that we have is the Guji Yei mod. The one that I'm using right here. A lot of you guys have been asking me, Oh my god, how do you get that Yei Miko skin? Well, here it is. It is going to be a mod in which we'll take the Sakura Sage costume, the Shimada hat, as well as the um, Pilgrim's Walking Staff, Crystal Star. Now that you know it, please do not ever ask me that question ever, ever again. 
So other than that, we have got the easy to see watering one in which will allow you to highlight um, the range of your watering as well as your Insta growers so that you can see like where the range will stop so that you can find the exact spot to just use the watering cans and the Insta growers and whatnot. It's going to be a really, really good mod if you're doing gardening. I've talked about this in the previous video as well. We have got the infinite night as you can see in the sky it is always going to be dark this is what the infinite night mod does as for the item per hour tracker pretty self-explanatory when you farm and then you get some items it's going to show you the number of items that you've gotten and the item per hour which will basically be really really good for you to track the rate that you're farming at especially like when you're farming geode caves or you're farming nitro or whatever ores that people farm nowadays anyways so the next one we have right here is the Moonlight Bulb Waypoint mod, which is going to be yet another mod that gardeners use to farm Moonlight Bulbs more easily. It's pretty self-explanatory. The next one that we have right here is a mod that I've recently just found out about, in which I use because I need to check people's mastery to actually enter the club. So as you can see right here, it shows you the Trove Mastery and the Geode Mastery ranks of players. So... If let's say I want to check somebody's mastery rank who wants to join Ganyu, by the way, the requirements to join Ganyu is 400 total mastery, then I can just check the leaderboard and it's going to show you the mastery rank right there. So I can just add up the Trove and Geode mastery rank to find out whether this guy is actually lying about having like 9,000 mastery rank and is just confusing it with his power rank. So besides that, we have got the smart fishing pools mod which will basically show you the fish pools easier um, which came out in this brand new fishing update in I believe November I wasn't really playing much then but yes this mod is going to help you see how many fishes there are in the pool as well which is going to be a really really helpful mod if you're trying to fish in order to get everything inside the fishing orrery thingy other than that, we have got this smart pyrodisc in which will show you the duration of the pyrodisc as well as the cooldown for it. Uh, I'm gonna try to kill some mobs and activate my pyrodisc real quick so that you guys can see. Okay, there we go. As you can see, 9, 8, 7. This is going to be how long your pyrodisc will activate for. And this 17, 16 second stuff is going to be the cooldown until you can activate your next pyrodisc. Other than that, we have got the Superior Loot Collector Advanced mod as we will be able to just loot collect everything as well as I believe Stellar Gems as well so you don't have to like unlock each gem that you have. I believe I can actually show you guys right here if I open one of these gem boxes. Okay, another one. No, another one. Okay, yep, there we go. So I can just loot this fierce gem without having to unlock it, which is cool. And there is going to be the total flux collectible thing at the bottom, in which will allow you to find out how much flux you can get from loot collecting your whole inventory. Other than that, we have the famous The Symbols Chat mod. It basically is a mod which allows you to be, I guess, a little bit um, weird with emotes and stuff and be a little cringe, but it is what it is with this mod. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know what it is, so let's just not talk about that. The next one that I have is the traditional Chinese chat font mod, which allows me to have a much more cleaner um, text font, as well as allow me to see people speaking in Chinese. As you can see, um, yeah, you can, you can just type in Chinese and you will be able to see like what the words actually are rather than just squares in the chat. So most of the time when people are typing squares, mostly it's Chinese or some other language like um, Japanese or maybe even Thai or Russian and other languages. So this mod will basically allow you to see those different languages and not just squares, which is really good for those of you who do speak those languages. Other than that, we have got the Turret Explosion VFX mod, which is very, very important if you're trying your best to survive in the Geode Caves, because if you didn't know, if you step into one of these turret stuff, you're going to lose your gas way quicker. So with this range, you can effectively know where you can stand safely without losing as much gas as possible. And this has proven to help players not lose that much gas and earn more flux. So I would recommend you guys to get it if you don't already have it for the geode cave farming. 
Other than that, we have got the Vacamatic Crystal Detector. Now this is going to be really helpful in the Geode Caves, and not only Geode Caves, when you're Shadow Shard farming as well. So as you can see, the individual crystal counter is going to be on the right, and the crystal cluster counter, I believe this is only going to be exclusively in the Geode Caves, will appear as well. So you can find the optimal spot for you to use your Vacamatic so that you don't have to spam it so many times. Other than that, we have got the Venti mod, in which is going to be for the Bard. It is going to be, once again, the Dispoil Divinity costume. So it's going to be really, really easy to obtain. Once you get like four Dispoil Divinity, I believe, you can just um, get this costume and get this mod and you can have this um, cool Venti costume. Please do not ask me about what my Venti costume is, whether it's a mod or whatnot. Ever again. And as you can see, we have got the Welcome UI Weekly Bonus Time List. And it basically allows you to see your weekly bonus on top of the event. So as you know, when you're playing, usually you can't see the weekly bonus the same time as this little um, event is ongoing. But with this mod, you can actually find out what it currently is. Something that you guys should really take note of is that the timing is a little off. So do note when the weeks end. It's not supposed to end in 22 hours. It's supposed to be in 6 days and 22 hours. So the final mod that we have right here is the Death VFX Lag Remover. For those of you guys who have been farming a lot in the Uber 10 ships, you do realize that when you kill a lot of mobs, let's say when you kill like those waves of mobs in the Cursed Skulls repeatedly, they're gonna have this really, really weird um, particles that explode and just lag your game like crazy. Yeah, this mod is supposed to help you to reduce that amount of lag so you don't actually have to drop your frames whenever you're at a high amount of waves. Oh, and I forgot to mention a mod that I have right here, which is going to be the 5 star next boss wave, as you can see, the actual wave and the next boss wave right here. So it's basically a mod that will allow you to keep track of what wave you currently are on, because as you know, 73 is going to be the wave that people stop being able to damage the Uber 10 bosses, well, most of the players, essentially. And this will allow you to know like when to stop in Uber 11. Usually it's like wave 17 where you can't damage anymore. So yeah, this is going to be a really, really neat mod. But do note that it's going to be blocked by the Compass Delve numbered mod. So just disable that and just switch on over onto the other mod and you should be fine because I believe there is going to be a Delve part to this mod as well in which I have not checked out just yet. So yeah, that is going to be the list of mods that I use and I would recommend to those of you out there. Um, I usually like to use the Trovasaurus site, so I'm not going to list this from Steam because usually all the time I pick my mods from the Trovasaurus site. I don't really use the um, trovetools.net, but you can use that as well so that the mods actually auto-update whenever they do. But for the time being, I just pick my mods off Trovasaurus manually. With that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in all the way until the end and I will see you guys sometime soon. I might plan on posting even more in the near future. Who knows? Maybe more variety content. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys sometime soon. As usual, peace out.